Welcome to the Journey to Esquire, the podcast alumni updates. I am your host, Abigail Dean. In this series, we take a walk down memory lane as we reconnect with the remarkable alumni of the Journey to Esquire Scholarship and Leadership Program. Join me as we embark on a journey to discover, where are they now? Amidst all the challenges and uncertainties, a group of determined individuals stepped into the Journey to Esquire Scholarship and Leadership Program, ready to seize their dreams of becoming legal professionals. Fast forward today, and it's time to catch up, to witness their journeys, celebrate their achievements, and gain insights into the valuable lessons they carry forward from the program. So, What's in store for this podcast series? Well, get ready to be inspired, intrigued, and enlightened. In each episode, I'll be sitting down with a remarkable alumnus or alumni, the trailblazers who embarked on their journeys to become legal professionals. We'll dive into their experiences, challenges, and triumphs, and explore how their participation in the Journey to Esquire program has played a pivotal role in shaping their paths. We'll reminisce about the highlights, uncover the pivotal moments, and get an inside look into their lives today. From courtroom victories to personal growth, from mentorship to forging lasting connections, these alumni have stories that resonate with all of us. Through their tales, we gain a greater understanding of the impact of education, scholarship, and leadership on their journeys. Hello, everyone. My name is Abigail Dean, and today I have the honor of being your host for the Journey to Esquire podcast. Today, we have a special guest, Dania Angelino. Dania, Dania Angelino. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. It's Thursday. Can't wait for Friday. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I thought today was Friday for a second. I wish. But, but can you tell us a little bit about your legal career since you evolved from the Journey to Esquire. Can you tell us a little bit about your year and the Journey to Esquire program? What year it was, your experience was with the program? Yeah, so I joined the program um, 2020 to 2021, and I graduated December 2020. And so that year, I was with Journey to Esquire doing all the, the webinars and the events and really like connecting with the rest of my class and everything pretty much like led to that presentation at the end the graduation and after that I took the California bar in July 2021 I'm getting my years mixed up but yes 2021 and I passed on the first try and I got my result November and after I got my result, I started looking for places out in San Diego, California to move. That was my plan all along. And January of the following year, I, my family and I, we moved to San Diego. And originally my plan was to kind of hit the ground running. But once getting here and kind of getting adjusted, I decided to take some time off. And during that time, I was applying for my moral character and fitness to the California bar. Um, I took the MPRE and I was, I had a, a part-time job. It wasn't stressful. It was um, working at an immigration law Mm -hmm. and I focused a lot on just resting, which is weird. It was weird because I went like from. K to JD. I never took a gap year. So I I would call it my gap year. And it was it was very nice. I'm really happy that I did that. And January of this year, 2023, I got sworn in. So started the year strong. And now I am working at a firm based out of LA. My job is remote. So I can stay in San Diego. And um, I'm doing landlord tenant law on the plaintiff side, litigation stuff. And 
Yeah, it's just been a, a roller coaster of adjusting to new attorney life and the practice and the law firm. Um, so a lot of adjustments, a lot of learning. It's it's been going by pretty quick. Yeah, definitely. I remember even back from law school, even my first year of law, uh, out of law school and practicing and comparing the two and realizing that wow. What we do in law school versus what we do in the real world, very drastically two different. <laughs> um, so your first year is definitely going to be an adjustment where you're learning how to practice the specific area of law that you are basically doing. Because every area of law is different. Originally, did you want to do landlord-tenant law? Like, How did you go about choosing this specific area of law to work in? Um, it really never crossed my radar. <laughs> um, my original plan was and still is to become a prosecutor. During my gap year, I did a lot of networking to kind of get acclimated to the legal community on San Diego. And I learned that it's a very competitive process to get into the prosecutor's office. And um, just this fall, they opened their application window to apply. So instead of basically taking what would have been two gap years, um, I just decided to jump in and get some experience until I had the opportunity to apply. It was through connecting with someone that I learned more about the job in the area of law. We met by chance on social media and she actually went to the same elementary school I did, which is crazy oh. because it's a very, very small neighborhood out of LA. And she like talked to me about the work she does and it's mainly going against slumlords. So for me, it, it kind of aligned with my goals and my passions to help community. And so I was open to it. And so I joined her to kind of work with her and assisting her on with her cases. So I, I guess it's her team. So I joined her team. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's been interesting. So your, your long-term plan is to work as a prosecutor? Yeah, um, I came out of law school not really knowing where I wanted to land. I just knew it was somewhere in civil rights law. And my plan was always to start out as a prosecutor and then eventually switch over to litigation and kind of do civil rights work or something along those lines. And I feel like I've had a lot of clarity this year, and I think that's still a part of my plan. I just, I'm not really setting like a, a time limit to like, this is how many years I want to be here. It's more like I, I'm just kind of going based off what interests me, what I'm passionate about and what I want to do. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now, you know, I know you just started working as a, basically officially your first job this past year. What do you think were the most valuable lessons or skills that you gained during your time at the Journey to Esquire program that has had a significant impact on your career as an attorney? There's been a lot of things. I would say the biggest one has been simply exposure to different types of law, different types of lawyers, understanding, I guess, how more of what the nature of the profession is, networking, how to kind of make those connections and, and find your community, like how helpful it is to find and have a community. I feel like, yeah, ex the exposure was was probably the, the biggest one for me because prior, prior to that, I didn't really have much exposure. I was just kind of keeping my head down and doing the work and being really busy. And I had externships here and there, but that was, I feel like that was very narrow or specific to the area of that externship. And through Journey to Esquire, you know, we met like a ton of different lawyers in the Tampa Bay area with different back backgrounds. And I had like a better understanding of how you can start out in your career like way over here and then end up way over there <laughs> and how no path really looks the same. And so that was kind of helpful to take some of the pressure off of feeling like it needs to be done a certain way or um, that there's one path to get to where you want to go. Yeah. 
I think you noticed something very important, which is networking. I remember being at Setson and they kept pushing that to us. They were like, listen, yes, working on the degree is great and getting your JD is great. But they told us even back then that a lot of the jobs that you're going to have in your career or a lot of people's experiences in obtaining jobs is through networking. It's because of who they know. So I definitely agree with you on that. It's great that you got that opportunity to do the journey to Esquire and learn the importance of doing that. Because even you said earlier that the current job that you have is because you connected with someone else. And I was so resistant to that. Like I, in law school, I hate networking. Every time I would hear that, I would be like, nope, absolutely not. Like you're going to catch me doing it a different way. But it kind of helped to go to some like volunteering events with friends and then I feel like with Journey to Esquire it was during the pandemic so it was remote but there was a lot of conversations uh with different attorneys and I like through those conversations I kind of got a better understanding of you know what networking is really is and now I see it more like like you're connecting with other lawyers and other people and you don't have to connect with every lawyer you can you know it's kind of like making friends it's just weird when you're a law student because it's so foreign (laughs) (laughs) yeah especially if you're introverted I'm introverted and so it's a choice like I have to I remember going back even now when I go to different law events I have to give myself a pep talk like listen yes age remember to get involved at least I give myself a goal of at least meeting one person yeah let me on one person because I know how I am and how you know in large crowds especially large crowds with uh, people that I don't know I tend to withdraw but as you as you're saying like it's something that it's it's an it's need like it's a need that can help you for the future as in terms of your future job but also if you need help like, yeah, if you need an attorney who it, it's you doing landlord tenant law, like it, it's great to have a, a reference point that if you need help on an issue that you can call this individual and be comfortable enough and say, listen, I need help with this. Can you help me? Mm-hmm. Especially as an attorney, because while we're in that process, there's just a lot of things that we don't know. Yeah. And, you know, what better way to kind of help you along with your learning journey? to be able to call somebody and say, can you give me some references or can you lead me to a case or a, to a website that will help me better understand this issue that I'm having issues with? Yeah, and I think even more so, it's even more so important as a first generation, which I feel like it's part of what makes it even harder, but it's important. Like for me, I feel like my mind has expanded and as far as what I'm open to, what I learn through conversation. So that's kind of how I see it. You know, like I'm, going to this event to make conversations and I'm also an introvert I get so much anxiety but I kind of prepare beforehand like what I'm gonna say what I'm gonna be open about how to respond to like I feel like the first thing people always ask is like oh what do you do and like you know or what do you want to do and you know that, that can be a lot and I'll I try to ask them questions so that they're the ones doing the most talking but in And just like simple one-on-one conversations. And I don't always do my part to continue that relationship. But even just a one-time conversation for me has proven to be beneficial enough to expose me to different ideas that I hadn't considered before. Like, I remember speaking to an attorney one time who was in the process of, you know, leaving her firm to start her practice. And I was talking to her like, oh, I can never see myself doing that. And she's like, no, no, wait, like that used to be me, but this and that. And, you know, that conversation was like, oh, okay. Like I have a different perspective of that and I'm going to like keep it in my pocket in case, you know, I ever want to take that route. I know it's an option for me. Yeah. Do you have any advice for someone who is introverted like us, who is going to law school or just because I believe that this, is, this just applies to law school or, or the world of law. I believe that networking is something that is applicable in any area or whatever career that you decide to, to kind of walk in that pathway towards. 
do you have any advice for someone who struggles with connecting with people and networking that you can give? Yeah, I think through my experience, I initially felt really discouraged because I found a hard time connecting and relating to other attorneys, whether that was because of cultural differences or just different backgrounds or whatever the reason was. And I think when I finally was able to kind of let go of that, I was able to see things a little differently. So my advice would be to not necessarily go into it with the expectation of connecting all the time. Like it's some, sometimes it's just going to suck. It's just going to you know, be bad. But, um, you know, you can be intentional with the events that you attend or the spaces you enter. And maybe you have nothing in common with a lawyer that, I don't know, is at your table or the group of lawyers at this event, you know, find something that interests you about them, like whether that's what they practice or something in their background or school, literally anything like, that interests you of this person that you feel comfortable asking them about and, you know, talking to them about. I think as a law student, it's really intimidating, but, and I didn't believe it. Like when people would say, like, that's when you want to go and network and meet all these people. But it's true. Like a lot of lawyers like talking to law students and I just see it as like making conversations. And if you're really like, introverted and anxious I just wouldn't expect to feel comfortable I know that I never really do I just have my way of kind of masking that my go-to actually is depending on the event if there's drinks I'll go and I'll get a drink and I try to always have a drink in my hand like whether that's alcoholic or non-alcoholic whatever your choice but I try to always keep one in my hand so that it keeps my hands busy and I look like I'm enjoying myself, you know, like I look like I'm comfortable instead of just fidgeting with my hands. For me, that's a big one that has calmed me down a lot when talking to people. <laughs> but yeah, that's great advice. Great advice. Even having something to drink with, to, to sip mm-hmm. on. Yeah. So that the conversation doesn't get awkward. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't and get... go ahead, go ahead. yeah. I was going to say, because you mentioned awkward, and I'm like, I've been in a lot of those spaces. It's okay to also, like, leave a conversation. And I think practicing, that used to give me so much anxiety. Like, I would feel just stuck sometimes. I'm like, oh, man, like, I don't know how to leave this conversation. Or it's just awkward. Like, kind of preparing what you're going to say, like, kind of like a sign off. And um, like I said, I did a lot of networking um, my first year in San Diego. And, you know, my sign off became like, oh, well, it was really nice talking to you. I'm going to go like over here. or I'm going to go see like who else I can find. Um, You know, something that's like, you know, thank you like for talking to me, for sharing that or like, you know, have a good night, whatever you want to say to kind of like signal that, yeah. you know, you're going to go on and do your thing. <laughs> that makes sense. That That's great advice. I agree with that. And also make sure you get their business card if you want to. <laughs> because I also make it a habit in networking events to get business cards even before I leave a conversation so that yeah. I have um, reference attorneys from when other clients call me for other like attorneys in different areas because mm-hmm. I have really had family, family members call me for um, at the time I was working in criminal law call me for a business attorney or they've been in a car accident like having that reference point of individuals that you can, you can be able to reference clients or individuals to is another reason as to why I get business cards. And then again, as well, I'm the also the type of person who I work better from a one-on-one standpoint. So that's another reason as to why I may connect with somebody or get to somebody's cards and ask them if you want to. And one of the things that you can do if you want to continue the conversation, let's say you connect with someone, you go, wow, this person's very interesting. Get their business card. Uh, well, can I reach out to you? Can we set a meeting time later time? Usually, the majority of the time, the attorney will, yeah, send me an email, send me a text. That's mm-hmm. an thing. And guess what? Now you're starting to build a conversation. You started to build a connection with someone on a more comfortable space. If that is something we were one-on-one individual, like having just talking to my own individual level without the noise in the crowd. That yeah, comes exactly. 
but it's it's bottom line the conclusion that we're basically saying is like it's necessary but let's let's switch over to talk about challenges and obstacles have you encountered any challenges and obstacles in your career so far and are there any lessons? This is a two, two, two point question. Are there any lessons in the journey to Esquire that you have learned that has helped you to overcome these challenges and obstacles? I'm like, what hasn't been challenging? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, understand. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, which I think is why journey to Esquire impacted me like in such a positive way because I also learned that I wasn't alone. And okay. feeling the way I was feeling and, and some of the challenges I was facing. And I think the the biggest lesson I, I learned from Journey to Esquire is really to open myself up to other people. I know that's not like legally related, but for me, it allowed me to go into other spaces and share my stories and build community I think that I had carried a lot of like just negative I don't know how to phrase it but just I guess negative energy from just some of the challenges that I was facing and then once being able to kind of voice that in a space of people that could relate and you know sharing some of my challenges I was able to see things differently and not be afraid to tell people that. And so the graduation presentation that we all had to do, that was the first time I really spoke so openly about my challenges in law school. And for me, I see that as the beginning. It was it was like a couple months later, I, I started a Instagram blog. And it's really grown since then and I've been able to build a community of other law students, other lawyers, law graduates taking the bar exam and I've mentored some of them and others have supported me through my challenges now because I'm open and just honest about my challenges in law school with the bar exam and now that I've been able to kind of build that space and that has opened doors for me. I have made a lot of connections. It's another way to network. And I have been invited to, you know, like the big, the bigger gala events, had my ticket sponsor to then go and meet other groups of people. And I'm really seeing the benefits of it now because as a first year attorney, I'm like really struggling. <laughs> and these, I have people that have already been having conversations with me or following me, like extending their support and their advice and, you know, whatever things they can share with me. And so I feel like Journey to Esquire just really helped me in understanding that, like, yeah, my challenges were unique to me, but at the same time, not really you know there's a lot of similarities in the challenges that law students and lawyers face in general yeah wow you have a whole blog <laughs> i do yeah what's that what's the name of it it started out as mindful latina because i was on this whole meditation thing but <laughs> now it's um it's called legally poderosa so legally powerful yeah. yeah, basically, if anybody's hearing this podcast and wants to go follow you, they can do it. Yeah, and during my gap year, actually, I did this like bar prep bestie program where I took on like at least 20 other bar, what's it called? Law graduates taking the bar exam, all women of different backgrounds and races and first generation. and. I pretty much just did my best to support them. Like I sent them daily affirmations or, you know, got on Zoom with them if they wanted to vent or talk or just needed reassurance. And, you know, I, I learned that, like I said, like a lot of the challenges they were facing were just so similar, like to each other, to first gen the first generation experience. And yeah, 
it was a good summer as far as that goes. I haven't been able to repeat it, but. Wow. No, no, what, what you're doing is definitely necessary because a lot is when you talk about first generation and you, even if you talk about culture, culture wise and some of the things that we go through, even back from law school, like in terms of people from African-American background, from Spanish background, what is your background? I'm Mexican Honduran. Mexican Honduran? Yeah. <laughs> you don't really see that a lot. A lot of people coming from that that level of the, those backgrounds within the area of um, the field of law, um, mm -hmm. especially where a lot of us were the minority. That's just That was just a reality. And so to have a space where these students can come and they can express some of the things that they're experiencing that are unique to them but somewhat similar is definitely necessary so i'm definitely glad that you're you're doing that creating that space mm -hmm. for them. but yeah that's 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 amazing it's amazing yeah. so we're basically in the process of interviewing the next class for a journey to esquire and do you have any advice for these next students that are coming into the program do you have any advice to these students as to how they should approach this program or just advice in general that you wanted to relate to these students? My biggest advice is to enter this program with an open mind and to be willing to participate 101% because even the things that, like I remember there was a legal writing workshop and I was, you know, like, you're just kind of like, oh, I don't really feel like, legal right like legal writing like that sounds like work right but I was so happy that like I showed up because I learned so much not just from the the subject matter of the the workshop but also the attorneys that were being invited to speak on it and so that's my biggest advice is to you know participate as much as you can and to take advantage of all the conversations with the attorneys that come in and speak to you or that are involved in some way, if they're there, that means they care and they want to help in whatever capacity they can help. And, you know, as much questions as you can. And I think being open about your own journey and your own challenges is a great way to build a support system because people aren't going to know how to support you or how to help you if you're not open about that. And I think the biggest thing I walked away from during that square was that, like, yeah, I'm a first generation and I've navigated, you know, my whole academic experience on my own. But that's the thing, like, you don't have to do it alone. There's definitely other people that you can lean on, even if it's not your family or your classmates. Like, there's other people and this is this is the space for that and um yeah just take advantage of everything absolutely great advice great advice give it a hundred percent but yeah thank you so much for coming we really appreciate you talk coming on to the journey to esquire podcast giving advice as to networking as to the journey to esquire program can you go ahead and give the people your contact information things that you want or updates as to uh, things that you're coming up that you want them to know about. But yeah, let them know what what's what's going on that you that you want to to let them know about. Yeah, um, I'm mainly active on my Instagram page, which is Legally Poderosa. I also have a website to just kind of like keep everything there, legallypoderosa.com. I have my email on both of those platforms. I'm pretty open to emails and you know talking to law students or pre-law students or whoever and you know if my time allows I love getting on calls with people and you know offering my support in that way also lately I've been interviewing other other people law students and attorneys new attorneys and I've been sharing it's like pretty new but I've been sharing that on YouTube which Everything is, is on my Instagram, but my main focus of the blog is to show my journey, but also with a focus on getting through the bar exam. So you can find me there. And 
I think that's it. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was nice, like, catching up with you and everything. Yes. It's been a while since we the last school together, so it's good. <laughs> I do. This is Journey to Esquire, the podcast alumni updates. I'm Abigail Dean, and remember, the journey continues and success is just around the corner.